All right, my friends, exciting one here today. Just got a call from a lady, a nice lady in Illinois, uh, Sharon. We're going to call her Sharon, and uh, she's a divorcee. She's married for 25 years, but she's divorced, 63 years old, and just wonders what she should be doing. Uh, she's retired now in order to take care of her grandkids, has another grandchild on the way, and that's what grandmas are supposed to do. And granddads, too, for that matter. Let me pull this up a little bit, by the way. Uh, you want to be with your grandkids. Uh, it's shocking, right? So... Uh, nothing big in her life, just wants to make sure she's getting by, doesn't want to be a burden, and also would like to leave a legacy to her kids as well, and grandkids if she could. Nothing fancy there. So, we're going to run a plan, and I'm going to show you what we're doing. And she knows we're doing this too, so we're not going to use anything that you'll recognize who she is, but this is going to be fun. So, welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning, my friends, the place you come to learn about divorce singles, who are 63 years old, living in Illinois, and what they should be doing differently. So let's let's set the premise up here. We got Miss Sharon from Illinois. Sharon from Illinois is calling in, just I'm like Dave Ramsey. Sharon from Illinois, what's on your mind? I got my PVC pipe. Look at that. Is there anything PVC pipe cannot do? Even got the um, <laughs> the <laughs> forgot what it's called there, the connectors. All right, so she has expenses. Her day-to-day -day living expense about two thousand a month. That's food, groceries, you name it. Uh, toilet paper, uh, you name it. Two, the cable bill two thousand a month. Her mortgage is seven fifty a month, and she pays uh, property tax at two fifty a month. All right, so three thousand a year in property tax in Illinois. That's not so bad actually. All right, so her total expenses are three thousand dollars a month. She has a pension of $13.50 a month. We're not sure if there's a cost of living yet on that, so she's going to let me know. I guess we're going to go in this and say no, she doesn't. But if she, if she, she'll let me know and find out. I have a feeling it won't be. And she has Social Security of $18.50. Now, she's, both, she's currently taking Social Security as well, even though she's only 63. Did I write her age up here? I did not. And she's 63. All right. And then her assets, pretty simple. She has equity in her home because her home is a fair market value of 185 and she owes 140 on it, which is that mortgage. So her equity in her home is 45,000 bucks. She has a 401k of 250,000, which the bulk was an Apple stock, which is kind of nerve wracking, but uh, she's done well and she knows what she's doing. And then she has savings of 27,000. All right, so the, her, her point was, should she even be thinking about doing Roth conversions? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to crunch a couple numbers here for you all to see on my scenarios, what I think on the top of my head, of what we should do. And then I'm going to stop this video and go upstairs and do a spreadsheet, uh, the software, the right capital software we use to actually crunch the numbers with actually valid documentation in terms of cash flows, software taxes, uh, inflation, the whole thing. So right now we're just going to do it on the whiteboard. And then we're going to take part two of this upstairs and see what it looks like when we start doing various scenarios. I think you'll get a kick out of that. So my first thing here is I'm like, well, you're only 63. You're not touching your account, not touching your 401k. You don't, you're not living beyond your means. You're not adding to your debt. You have no car loan or anything like that. So you're doing just fine. But the problem is going to happen is, is when this 401k uh, in seven years, let's just say it's worth uh, 350,000 bucks. All right. So if that's worth $350,000. At that point, she'll take 350, divide that by 27.4, and she's going to have an uh, IRA distribution of $13,000. So we know what's going to happen, all right? So let's, let me show you what, what happens here. So we're just going to go, let's just erase this. All right, so what I'm going to show you here is what happens when she hits 70, with an IRA distribution of $14,000, of uh, $13,000, all right? So we're just gonna fast forward today. We're not inflating anything, all right? Just be advised, we're not inflating anything other than we did inflate her rate of return on her portfolio, but we're not inflating the tax codes, and we're not inflating Social Security. So before anyone says, you didn't use inflation, it's okay. We're just saying we're gonna fast forward till 70, we're gonna use her same Social Security numbers that she has today, we are going to use a different uh, RMD amount because we did have an increase on that 250000 in which it grows to, what I say, three fifty or something like that. Um, but we're not inflating the tax codes either, the tax uh, brackets. They're going to stay the same. So at that stage, she'll have Social Security. She'll have a pension of thirteen fifty. Social Security, eighteen fifty, dollars And she'll have... 
1,064 RMD. So we add all these puppies up. And see, I love this stuff, man. I know it's weird, but I, I can do this all day long. Uh, 1,850 plus 1,350. So her, uh, distrib her total income is going to be 42... 64 a month. All right. So 4264 a month will be her total income once she hits 70. So we go back to provisional income rules. We say how much will be taxable. All right. So we take one half of Social Security and everything else. So one half of Social Security. If we take our trusty calculator, we have 1850 divided by 2925. And we have one eight five oops one three five zero for the pension and IRA. So we take nine twenty five plus thirteen fifty plus one zero six four three 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 nine times twelve. So forty thousand zero six eight is her. I'm getting a mic tomorrow, by the way. I just ordered one off Amazon. So if, if when I'm facing that way, don't hear me that well. I know my voice is loud, but I'm getting a mic. It'll be better. All right, so her provisional income is 40068 All right, so now what we do, we got to figure out what her taxes on her Social Security are. So 40000 First 25000 or nothing. Twenty-five to $34,000. $4,500. It's nine thousand bucks divided by half, so forty five hundred, and anything above thirty four, which is thirty four thousand six oh six eight times point eight five. All right, so her taxable uh, Social Security will be five one five seven plus forty five hundred nine six five seven taxable Social. Security. All right, so let's keep going. I hope you guys are with me here. So we're going to keep going. All right. So we got Sharon from Illinois calling in to the Josh Scanlon show, if you will. All right, so now we got, we, oh man, what was it? Okay, 9657. So we got, now we got to figure out her AGI. AGI, 9657, taxable Social Security, plus her pension, which was what, 1350? <laughs> yep. Plus her IRA distributions. Oh man, what was that? I think I said 1,064. I forgot. It might be off a couple bucks. I just forgot what it was. No big deal. All right, so we take 9657 plus 1350 plus 1,657. Oops. oops. We got to go 1350 plus. 1064 equals 2 for times 12. That's 28968. So we take 28968. Two, eight. Add these two together. Times by 12. 28968. Add these two together. Plus 9657. Is her AGI subtract her thirteen thousand six hundred? We get twenty five thousand a taxable income, and we remember the first nine thousand five hundred or so. Is that ten percent? Oops, twenty five oh two five minus nine five zero zero times point twelve. So we're going to have 1863 at the 12% tax bracket, plus 950 or so at the 10% tax bracket, plus 950. Her total tax will be 2813. Now, Illinois is very favorable to retirees. No tax there. Um, you know, we'll have to look in. I, not much. I don't think there is going to be any. Uh, pensions aren't taxed. Social Security is not taxed. So 2813 is her tax on a total income of what we say, 40000 bucks or so. We had a... 1850 social we had a uh, 28968 yeah 50,000 so that's not bad i mean 2813 on social security uh with social security 
and her other income of $50,000. That's not bad. That's just the first year of our RMDs, though. So when we go upstairs and do it on the computer, it's going to look a lot worse. So the question that comes down still, though, can we do anything today while she's only 63 to reduce this burden? Because that's only going to go up and up and up. All right, before I forget, I did tell her she was divorced. Her husband made more money than she did. I told her, and I said, her husband about the same, her ex-husband, I said, just remember, at the end of the day, if he gets hit by the proverbial bus, you're probably going to be able to relinquish your own Social Security and step in his. Most likely, he's getting paid more than you, so just keep that in the back of your mind, so that way, if you do see the obits and he died, you know, don't go out and kill him, but if he died, uh, you can step into his benefit because you're married over 10 years and you didn't remarry before the age of 60. So, and again, something small, but it might not be. I mean, it could be the difference between, you know, $2,500 a month in Social Security and $1,800 a month. That, that could be a big deal. All right, so let's pause this here. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Comments, questions, concerns. Don't forget to go to the blog at heritagewealthplanning.com. And I'm going to take this upstairs. I'm going to run some models upstairs in the software. We'll see ya.